Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how to be in a relationship during a pandemic. So before I dive into all of this, we are still doing our with you promotion for 25% off our membership bundle. So it's for the all access pass. It gives you access to literally all of our like-minded individual social events where everybody sort of gets together, has morning and evening routines, mastermind groups, um, and just social events where they connect with one another and sort of share about their journey, as well as I do four live webinars every single week with all of our students. And um, we have about 40 previously recorded courses. We add new ones every single month. So you can access all of that for 25% off. And there's a link in the description box below. Um, and, and literally all of that and all the work in there with the workbooks, everything, if you buy a three month bundle or more, it's basically coming out to $50 a month. Um, and we do have scholarship options available for people as well if you're just struggling during the pandemic. So take a look at that. If you are looking for a scholarship option, you can reach out to my team at info at personaldevelopmentschool.com as well. So let's discuss this really important topic. How can we do a relationship or have love during a pandemic? So one of the first things I always say to people is that if we want to solve a problem, being the fact that we are in a long distance relationship, we're not able to see a person, something like that, um, we have to first isolate the problem as specifically as possible. So we're going to look at this context and imagine that you're not really going to get a lot of opportunity to see the person that you love or that you're in a relationship with and really care for as much as you would otherwise, if at all. And so the first part of isolating that problem becomes, okay, so what problems does that cause a relationship? What needs start going unmet? And one of the first things you will see is that there's a need for closeness, like physical proximity which really leads or really is about intimacy in a relationship. And I don't mean like physical intimacy, of course, that's a contributing factor, but I actually mean um, emotional intimacy, like proximity between people creates emotional intimacy to a certain degree and is a large contributor in the very least. So assuming that that's basically being taken away to a certain degree, we have to learn how can we come up with better strategies to build more closeness. And the strategies we can use are number one, become more vulnerable. And this means in your conversations that you're having, how are you trying to close that gap of intimacy, of closeness to another person? Well, a great way of doing this is literally to close the gap by being more vulnerable, sharing more to create a more emotionally intimate dynamic. Now, of course, you have to be careful like who you're doing this with and how far along the relationship you are. You don't want to necessarily like bear your soul on the second date you're having with a dismissive avoidant person or something like that. Like take this with your awareness of the other topics we discuss on this channel. Um, but I mean, like ask somebody more about like what they're feeling, how their day was, what's going on, what they need in a relationship, what would make them feel better, more empowered, you know, ask for details about a person's day. So the person starts opening up a little bit more um, and vice versa, share more. Share more details. Talk about the little nuanced things that happened. Um, share about how they made you feel, what you thought about them, these sorts of things. And the more you, you do those things, it's like you're bringing the person into your internal reality, which is making up for the fact that that person's not with you directly next to you in your external reality right now. Um, so that's number one. Number two, learn what one another's love languages are. I have a video on this channel about the love languages and the correlated patterns between love languages and attachment style. Um, this is Dr. Gary Chapman's work. He says there are five love languages. It's honestly pretty self-explanatory. Um, it is words of affirmation, which is like giving compliments, gifts, acts of service, which is like doing favors for people in a way, or like doing things through your actions, cooking up somebody a meal, driving them to the airport, those sorts of things. Um, physical touch, really self-explanatory like gifts is and um, quality time. And so for people who have a quality time need, yes, you don't have that proximity, but I've seen people do all kinds of creative things. I was mentioning this in, the, in a previous video. I've seen people sit down and be like, we're gonna cook the same meal. We're gonna sit down at the same time. We're gonna like open the same bottle of wine and we're gonna sit and pretend we're having dinner together face-to-face, -to -face, but really we're gonna be over a Zoom call. Um, I've seen people in terms of quality time, like a lot of people who value quality time want to have deeper conversations. I've seen people, you know, pull up, we have like a, 
a list of deep connection questions inside of the school. And I've seen our students sit down and literally go through like the deep connection questions with their loved ones and things that spark deeper conversation. There's also apps for that online. There's a, um, a Gottman deck, I believe is, is what it's called. Um, and there, that has a bunch of deep connect, connection questions you can ask. Like literally you want to find updated strategies that you're gonna have to brainstorm about a little bit and get creative about, but things that make you feel like you're connected together. Another really important thing is if you don't like love face-to-face -face stuff, like FaceTime, video chat, stuff like that, it's worth like trying to desensitize from that and putting in the effort to do that um, and get and getting used to it because it brings that like personable connection. Even things like sending a voice note instead of a text message, all those things sort of make a bit of a difference when it comes to intimacy and closeness. So those are some really important topics. Um, talk about your needs more. That is one of the most important things. Like you have to get really clear about what you're missing because this isn't working for you the way you would probably want to be able to see the person physically. And you want to come up with like, this is what feels like it's missing. This is what I need and discuss it and open up about it. And the rule of when you're communicating your needs is to communicate your needs, to um, paint a picture of what that looks like. Because I've seen a lot of people in relationships go, I want to feel more loved. And then the person's doing like acts of service and really they wanted physical touch. And, and then there's like <laughs> this huge misunderstanding where one person thinks they're trying, they don't see why the other person's still being critical and not receiving their love. And it's really because they're not loving in the way that was illustrated clearly by the person who needed that. And so it's really easy to miss the boat um, or miss the mark, I guess. So, so that's really important. See your, and then, so once you've painted the picture, see your needs through. Don't expect somebody to be like perfect at remembering every single time. Like we have to remind people, remember, as long as we see the effort and that the person's trying, that's three quarters of the battle. Then check in, remind them from time to time if needed and encourage your loved ones to communicate their needs as well. And all of these things will provide very helpful features for navigating either a long distance relationship or a relationship during a time of isolation. So hopefully this helps a lot. Let me know what's working for you, what needs are being met by you and creative strategies you're coming up with um, at this time. And thank you so much for watching and for being here. I will see you in the next video.